the video on. Before the baby came. Whenever Cindy's done talking. I might just set. Go. It's on? Oh, okay. So, the last video we did, people made comments about me being pregnant, so cool. now we're doing it this way to keep it hidden. <laughs> <laughs> you could, like, edit that or whatever. No, I wanted to share um, a whole bunch that the Lord's been doing. There's been a lot of revelation about stuff. There's uh, a deeper understanding of who God is, and uh, it's really helped me to let go of a whole bunch of stuff that I thought was important before. And uh, on one side, it's been kind of, you want to cry, because you're like, what? You know, I walked in this for so long, and like, this is horrible. But then on the other side, I'm seeing the goodness of God, and I'm like, I'm never going to think that way again. You know, and it, it's because... I walked in it so much, and I tasted it so much, and I see the devastation and how much I hurt people and how much I just was not showing the love of Christ all the way. And it blows me away because I'm like, he still used me. He still hugged on me. He still loved me. He still held my hand. Uh, all the times I was tired and I would cry out to him, he didn't turn his back. And even when I had some dark moments where I'm like, God, I don't feel like I can do this anymore. And he said, I'm not going to give up on you. Uh, and he's, he cooked a steak with me. It was a Walmart steak. It wasn't a very you know expensive one. I buy them once in a while. It's a treat. It's something I like. And uh, this is a really dark period. A whole bunch of stuff was happening. Had a whole bunch of open doors was getting beat up by the enemy and I'm like I don't know if I'm going to be able to walk this out and do it the way that I did before because I would remember back when I first came here the shininess but I was single and I'm not blaming on having a wife but there was a lot of other stuff that had been added onto me that uh really really put some pressure on me and uh but he stuck it out and when I was, I was watching Aquaman, and I was cooking the steak, and I'm crying as I'm watching it because he says, I'm not going to give up on you. And he's told me a whole bunch, and it was hard to believe it because I really was like, you know, I'm not doing a good job for you. I'm not raising people up for your kingdom. You know, I'm not proclaiming your gospel. I'm not going and... and, and going to the farm and praying with people. I'm not going door to door and saying, hey, what's up, how you doing? You know? And like, the Lord's like, I'm not going to throw you away. And he, he showed me, he's like, what kind of God and dad would I be if I loved you when you did everything perfect, but then when you failed, I was done with you. And I was like, I still, in my fleshly heart, I'm like, you're going to give up eventually, <laughs> you know, and uh, he said, uh, and he said this to me before, and we like discussed, I am nothing like the world, I am nothing like the world, and my ways are not your ways, and he would continue to tell me about how he would, the ugly part is when he'd be there even more, because he knew that was going to speak to me more than when he was just there when I was a good boy. And so, uh, all this is going on, all this is happening, uh, there's a lot of like warfare happening, a lot of shaking happening with me and my wife and everything, and uh, I thought I was doing right, I thought I was hearing God, and I'm like, look, you put your foot on the gas pedal, you don't look back, you don't complain. You don't say a thing about how much this sucks or how much you don't like it right now. You put your, you know, you keep going. Shut up and suck it up. And that mentality sounds good. It even lines up with scripture, you know, set your face as flint. You know, don't, uh, uh, don't look back. He who looks back is unworthy of the kingdom of God. 
I'm paraphrasing. It's uh, the New Living Translation. But, uh, so, I am like, as I'm going through this, let's say about four, four years, five years, well, yes, yeah, since I've been here, my attitude was, it's all or nothing. And the Lord put you in this position. If you're not tired, you're not doing it right. If you're not exhausted, if you're not spent to the last drop every single day, you're not living for God all the way. And I didn't realize how that was causing my filter on everybody else and all that stuff. And I said that in the previous video. But I realized, all of a sudden, here I am. Three weeks of awe was a butt kicker. This one, I've been through them before, didn't really feel the pressure. This one, it hit like a ton of bricks. And like I held on to that little grain of hope of like, when the three weeks of awe is over, it's going to be better. There's, I thought it was nine weeks of consolation, but I guess it's seven. I thought if you had to hug your kid three times, Anyway, the way I did the math, they didn't do it that way. So anyway, the seven weeks of consolation shows up. And like all this stuff breaks off. I mean all of this stuff. Like he pulls the veil back. And uh, I, I, in the other video I talked about my wife and how I'm like when she's weak, I'm not upset. I might take a break. If you ask my wife, she said she... she she gets nervous around people, so she didn't want to do the video, but she said hi, and then she approves of this message. And when you meet her, you'll understand. She's amazing. But uh, all of a sudden, she tells me she's tired. I'm like, okay, cool, you just rest. And she's like, what? Because <laughs> before, I've been like, babe, we got kids. We, we, got, we got a family to take care of. And I thought I was implementing God's blueprint on all of this and it was James's blueprint so I take my little blueprint and put it over what I thought it should look like and I'm like hey we got to get up we got to feed them we got to do this you got to do that you're a woman you're a wife da, 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 da. never seeing the other option of like it's okay to rest it's okay to take a break it's okay to take a nap it's okay to say hey babe I don't have it today can you do it yeah and trusting, and on the flip side of this, the reason I'm able to do this and say this now is because I'm believing that God's with me even more. I put, and I'm learning more as I keep talking about this, there's more revelation coming with it, but I put a pressure on her that should have came, you know, that she was supposed to fulfill, but it, it wasn't her, it was God. He was supposed to be the one that fulfilled it. And I figured if she wasn't stepping up, that she wasn't doing a good job, da 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 I said, saying, Lord, if I have to do this by myself, that's okay. And if she needs a week off and break, whatever, I got this. I can do it. We got this, Lord. And not holding a grudge against her or having this unrealistic crap say, hey, she doesn't do it as good as you do. You know, you're not, you know, you're tired and you're not wanting to do this and and you're getting up and doing it. By golly, you know, you're holier than she is. And I didn't think of it like that. But when you finally get, when the Lord pulls everything back and you look at the tiny little fine print at the bottom, that's what it was. You're not going as hard as I am. You're not doing as fast as I am. You're not as tired as I am. Which opened up the door for resentment, for bitterness, for not looking at my brothers and sisters in Christ that were struggling with love mercy and empathy and saying, God, what can I do to help ease their burden? What can I do to help lift them up? Is there something I can pray? Is there something, what can I do to help? Versus nobody wants to do it the right way. Everybody's just not stepping up. This is crap. I'm tired. If they don't want to do it, then why should I? Completely screws up everything. And now, now, after all of this, I'm like, I'm seeing the good in everything. Even, and I'm getting words now that are not suck it up, cupcake. <laughs> you know, it's, hey, guys, God's seen this. 
God knows what's going on. We gotta help this brother. We gotta help this person. Yeah, they're going through a rough time, but it, it's this is great because we get to pray for them and maybe hold them up long enough that they can move on to some other place and get a lot more. We gotta be the hands and feet in Jesus. And uh, one of the words I got today is this is like Ivy League school. And then how how could you not be grateful that the Lord's like here? I'm gonna put you in. This really awesome school that, that's going to teach you all the gospel stuff you need. And, and not just teach it to you. It's going to be written on your heart with a diamond stylus. And it's not going to leave. It's not going to fade away. And I'm going to, I'm going to bestow this honor and this privilege on you. That changes everything. Then all of a sudden you're like, man, why'd you pick me? You know, but then it's like, you know, he picks the dumb things to confound the wise. And I mean, everybody here has had some kind of hang up, some kind of thing. Somebody's talking about a brother having a hard time with something. And first I'm like, why are they doing that? And then here I've been getting the reality of the world and of God. And some people have habits. They got to do it about 15, 20 more times for that they realize, hey, I can change this. That doesn't make them a bad person. That doesn't make them a bad person. When all of a sudden you're like, no, this is a pattern, and I want to help them out of it. But there is some crazy stuff that the world does that overlays with the Bible, if you look at it, about finding something uh, holding people's hands when they're going through a hard time. AA talks about having a sponsor. Then there's stuff where they, 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 they without realizing that, they, they incorporate the Bible in some of the stuff they do. And I don't mean all the way. I don't think AA, you can worship a tree and, you know, I think it's Jesus or nothing. But there's a lot of great stuff in there that helps people to stay sober and to keep that door closed. And you can and it's the same with our walk with people here and everywhere. If you're with a, a guy that's trying to get sober, you might have 50, 60 times that he doesn't get sober. But you don't stop. And, and, and you let the Lord take care of it. If it comes towards the end of the show, don't put your mind in it. it, it in all your ways, acknowledge him. And I especially think when it comes to people and push them away. And putting them off. The Bible says, or people say, like on Facebook, about uh, the people in your life that are bad and toxic, don't be around them. And I'm like, but what if you're the only light for that toxic person? What if you're the only one that that's going to say, hey, I'm here for you? And like 10 years later, they get saved and they come to you and they say, I never forgot. That you, out of everybody else, meant it when you said you loved me and stuck it out. There's just too much at stake with the soul to just, I don't want to be around toxic people. Well, Jesus is around toxic people all the time. And he kicked butt and took names with it. And he stayed clean. And he stayed holy. And that's our job. You can go to the bar and, and sit there and witness to people. And not be unholy because you're in a bar. You can go to AA to help yourself stay sober. And still not be unholy because you're in AA. You can go to a Buddhist monk temple. And, hey Lord, is there somebody here I can talk to? That I can minister to? And you're not unholy. Uh, you're not of it. You know what I mean? And. Uh, huh? If yeah, if he sends you. I'm not saying to go like go to a party where you're like you just got over doing cocaine and you're at a party where you're doing a bunch of drugs. I'm not saying any of that. But I'm saying there's God's real, man. And when I say real, I don't mean like, oh God really did you know, do all this. I mean he's real. Like he understands the situation. You know, uh There was somebody here that responded with anger. 
And I heard, I heard people talking, and Doug's even said it. I couldn't win any other way. I, I didn't understand what he meant by that. He was just telling me about it, and I heard the Lord say, it's okay. It couldn't win any other way. And when he said that, the download I got, she didn't know anything else to do. And she had nothing else to, to that. She did the best she could with what she had in that situation. And then the Lord shows me, now this is going to open up the door for her to ask for more things. So the next time it happens, she's going to be better off for it. And she's going to be able to do it better. I'm like, wow, you're really good at this, Lord. Because, like, how, how, how much sense does that make? I mean, that's like, that's perfect, you know. That, And then you hear the mercy, you hear the gentleness, you hear the patience. And it's like, but you're you're dead right to smoke them, you know. You're you're out of here. You're done. You you did this, and like you're not. You're not. And not only you're not doing that, you are reaching out with the most infinite amount of love and patience. Like, I it blows your mind sometimes. And I'm like, if you're doing this, man, and this is what I see you doing. Jesus said, I only do what the Father's doing. I only do what I see the Father doing. I think we all see the Father doing different things. I think everybody, when they see the Father, you might see him standing in front of an abortion clinic with your daughter, and you're standing there just saying, hey, this is my kid. And they see the beauty of the child, and it causes them to really see stuff. The Lord uses it. Or you could be the guy like me. You're the encourager. You're the one that you hug people, you tell them everything's going to be okay. You show them all the good stuff that's happening and remind them about how good God is. But I'm looking and I'm seeing what my father is doing and I'm doing the same thing. And that, right now you're just talking about that, I just got that revelation. We all see him doing different things, but it does not mean we're wrong. And of course, I don't mean go start a cult and all this crazy stuff. But if you're following the Lord, before you judge somebody else's walk and what they're doing and saying they're not right, are you even supposed to be in their lane? You know? One of the things I heard was stay in your lane. Don't be trying to be something you're not. And if, if you're the person that, like me, the, the one that shares the encouragement and all that stuff, then do what the Lord told you to do. And trust it. But uh, all this stuff, uh, me and Alicia, we're having another kid. And this is what I really want to do the video on. Everything's better because now she really knows that she's not going to be doing this alone. And that we're going to be doing it together. And uh, yeah, uh, I'm excited. And I know she's excited. And we can't wait to see what this is going to bring, what it's going to look like. But there's definitely a, a lot more joy and a lot more understanding and appreciation of what's in front of us. Because the Lord did this great work in us and undid a lot of our filters. And some of the stuff that really, really blew me away was that I didn't think I did a good job, and uh, he gave a word saying I did a good job, and to keep up the good work, and I'm just like, what? And this is awesome. I guess the big thing I want to say with this whole video is God's good. I cannot stress to you how much. The wicked people that need judgment, the Lord's got that. But if you're trying to follow the Lord with all your heart, and you're stumbling, and you're having a hard time, but you're trying, He's not done with you. And he's not seeing you like that. Like the wicked people that need to go to hell and all that stuff. Now, if you're trying with all your might and all your strength, even the fact that you're crying and repenting for it, that comes
comes from the Lord. Every good thing comes from the Lord. So if you feel horrible about your sin, you're struggling with it, and you're trying to get rid of it, there's a work being done with it. But, yeah. God's good. And beyond whatever we can think or imagine. And not just giving us more whatever we can think or imagine, but He really is good beyond what we can think or imagine. Uh, yeah. So I'm just going to ask the Lord, simple, sweet, and to the point, that all the stuff that He's been doing for me, all the stuff He showed me, I'm just asking that He impart it to you guys, only to Jesus. Uh, but I really pray like all the, all the, all of it. I, I know I can't come up with enough words to explain it, so I just ask that you to disimpart it to all of you. And don't lose hope. And never tire of doing good. And don't stop saying you're sorry. 